Hello? Who is this? You want me to see 40 shows in two days? It can't be done. <laughs> Welcome to vlog 24. Did you ever watch that series with Jack Bauer? I used to be obsessed with it. I even had a little part in the London version when it came over and did a special. I mean, it wasn't even a full series, it was like 12 episodes, but it was amazing. Check it out. Anyway, back to my stagey week. On Monday, I was at the Spotlight Studios for a special evening of LGBT new writing by a new company called Actor Awareness. Actor Awareness was set up by actor Tom Stocks and each themed night presents four pieces of brand new writing. This month, with it being Pride, they decided to give it a LGBT theme. Now I'm not saying a straight actor and producer can't curate LGBT work, but watching what he selected I have to question whether they would have been better off by bringing in a panel of LGBT producers to select the work. I don't know the process they got to in selecting the pieces they used, but it didn't seem fully representative. And what I mean by that is that to me, it just seemed like they'd cashed in on the theme of LGBT cause it's Pride Month rather than being invested in producing LGBT work. And the quality and content of the four pieces varied and was questionable. Now the evening started off with a piece called Where is Cecily, written by Nicole Lachana. Now Nicole, according to her own Twitter, is a queer brown female. She has written a piece about transgender. I'm not saying that a cis person can't write a trans story, by all means, but what was evident was that this piece didn't really seem very well researched and in places seemed quite insensitive. I don't know what process Nicole has taken to research this story or whether she's even spoken to trans people and got their insight or their input. It certainly didn't feel like it did. On top of that, they hired Ramus Brooks, a cis man, to play the trans man. Which in this day and age, I do feel is a bit unacceptable. There are plenty of trans actors out there. It's just lazy and sloppy. And although, yes, it was just a scratch evening, it's still no excuse. If you're going to present a trans story using trans characters, find some trans actors. Simple. And if you're going to write about a trans story, do some research. Perhaps she did. I don't know. I'm only assuming she didn't. But like I say, from an informed audience, I didn't feel that she did. It felt uncomfortable to watch. Next up was a story called The Boys of NYPD Choir by Jonathan Hall, which was a two-hander between two gay characters. And again, I shouldn't assume, but it felt like one of the actors was straight. Now, obviously, there is nothing to stop gay actors playing straight characters or straight actors playing gay characters. But when it comes across so blatantly that this actor is straight, it's a bit detracting. And again, it's just lazy. If you're going to write a gay character, either find a great actor who can portray the essence of a gay character or just hire a gay actor. The story itself was quite charming. 
and there was a nice little twist, which I genuinely didn't see coming. Again, it's a work in progress, so I'm not going to pick it to pieces. Next up was Blank Page by Alex Britt, who also starred in it. And again, I'm taking assumption, but it seemed like one of the actors was straight. Either that, or he was just a very unconvincing actor, because he did not come across as a gay character to me. And it seemed a bit self-indulgent of the writer to write in a scene which predominantly had him snogging said actor for the entire scene. Um, again, it's a work in progress, but even at this point, it just didn't feel like anybody else had read the script before he put it on. Most writers now use dramaturgs. These are people who are independent, who come in, read your script, and give you some notes and help you develop and shape the piece. They are invaluable and all new writers should use these people as a resource. With these new writers so far, it doesn't feel like they do. I could be wrong. Finally, saving the best till last, Satan's Slideshow by Leon Fleming, starring my friend Elliot Hadley. Now, Leon is a writer from Leeds who I've known for quite a while. He's written two plays that I've seen, one called Sid and one called Kicked in the Shitter. Both were directed by Scott Lacrasse, who recently directed Country Music. Now, he's worked with Elliot before, and Elliot is a brilliant actor. I first met Elliot when he was acting in Five Guys Chilling at the King's Head Theatre, and we went on to become friends. He recently appeared in Coming Clean at the Trafalgar Studios. He is one of the best comedic actors I know. And this new piece by Leon is incredible and was superbly performed by Elliot. As I say, new writing is so important and these evenings are a brilliant platform for new writers to practice their stuff. But I have to maintain if you're going to write something new make sure you've developed it enough before even considering presenting it to an audience there is so much work that should go into new writing before it gets to that stage and a lot of the time that just doesn't happen another problem i had with the evening and no disrespect to her she was lovely it was awkwardly hosted by carmen ali now carmen ali is a hilarious straight comedian. Again, it's an LGBT night. It shouldn't have been that hard to find a queer host for the evening. On Tuesday, I was at the press night for The Light in the Piazza. Now, I'll be honest, I've never actually heard of this show. It's about 15 years old, and this is the European premiere. Not only had I never heard of the piece, I'd never heard of Rene Fleming, who I know is a revered opera singer. Also, and this is my lack of knowledge, I didn't know who Dove Cameron was either. Again, she is a very famous Disney actress. So both of these are huge stars in their own rights. So I can see that it's a huge coup to get them performing on this stage. They are joined by Rob Houchin, who obviously I do know. He is an incredible young performer, as we all know. In this show, however, he's playing an Italian, which I'm not sure I was convinced by. His voice is incredible, but he's just too blonde. The production is semi-staged, but that's no excuse. I still think they should have addressed the casting a little better. Rob is renowned for starting his career in Les Mis and has always tried to shake off that perception that he can only play that type of classical character. He then obviously went on to play Eugenius and recently starred in Broken Wings, which again I felt was very miscast because in Broken Wings he was playing a Middle East man. Here again, like I say, he's now playing an Italian. And his accent was great. He just didn't look Italian enough for me. Which for me, 
took a bit of the authenticity out of the piece, which I have to say was a bit dull. Nevertheless, the orchestra was incredible and it is a rousing score, which people adore. I personally would prefer to just sit at home and listen to the CD. I don't think this production offers anything more, if I'm honest. It was lovely to catch up with a few stagey faces after the show, including Carrie Hope Fletcher and her boyfriend Oliver, who had just got back from Disney World. They seemed really, really well. And as well, Benjamin Platt was there, who I didn't get to speak to, but he looked really well. On Wednesday afternoon, I was at the Other Palace for the workshop presentation of Confessions, a brand new espionage musical by Liedert and Kernsley. Now, if you saw the interview I did a few weeks ago with Kurt and Oliver and director Molly Marie Walsh, you will know a little bit about this show already and will have already heard some of the songs. This is a brilliant production, superbly written, with incredible orchestrations already formed. It is a empowering story of female espionage, which given the success of shows like Killing Eve, I think will prove very popular. Now these boys have worked incredibly hard already and already this show is in incredibly good shape. The cast are exceptional. Brilliant singers, incredible actresses, and given they only had a week to do this, it is astounding the level of talent. It is astounding how developed this piece feels. I was so impressed and I cannot wait to see what comes of this show. They presented it for the entire week every evening with one matinee. On Wednesday evening, I was at the One Act Festival 2019 at the Stockwell Playhouse. Now this incredible festival has been going for 35 years and I knew nothing about it. Stretched across an entire week, each night they present three pieces of new writing. But what sets this festival apart is that each evening they are joined by adjudicator, reviewer, Paul Vale from the stage. Paul watches with the audience each piece and then at the end of the show, in front of the audience, he gives his own critique. So straight away, these new writers are given constructive criticism about their work directly after presenting it. And Paul does a really good job of using his experience and consideration to inform and kindly give feedback to all these new emerging talent. Now obviously the work varies throughout the week. On the night that I went, I saw a very long and quite bizarre clown act, a very radical feminist poet, and a brilliant duologue about loneliness and intimacy with a very clever twist. Now the final piece I would have said has a lot of potential and I would definitely want to see more of that. The other work wasn't really for me. I don't really get clowns. And the feminist poet was a little self-indulgent and very specific. At certain points she was instructing the audience how to treat your girlfriend which, as a gay man, I don't need to know. Like I say, it kind of cut off a lot of the audience, but, but the work was specific to her, and I commend her for being brave enough to tell her story. Paul has adjudicated this festival for seven years, and like I say, it's been going for 35. And it's definitely something I'll check out again next year. Now I have to show you this video of Grant Jackson that is going around Facebook at the moment. It is incredible. Whilst working on the bar at the Admiral Duncan in Soho, he knocked out this classic from Celine Dion and sounded incredible. Wow, what a voice. <laughs> Let go. 
drink he was making in that video but his voice it, wow on Thursday I got to interview Andrew Keats about his new play Dark Sublime and had a little sneaky look at the set and met a couple of the actors I had no idea that this show is about lesbians all the marketing that they've done suggests that it's just a sci-fi story which in itself I'm all about. I love Star Trek and I love sci-fi. But knowing that this is a story about ageing lesbians, I am all for this. There aren't enough stories about lesbians, especially told by older actors. Other than Absolute Joy at the Suffolk Playhouse recently, I can't wait to see this show when it opens next week. And here is a little bit from the interview with Andrew. It's easy for us to obsess now about it being a sci-fi show and I can talk about all the references but at the heart it's a play about older gay women and lo and behold they haven't got any issues, they're not women talking about the problems with men as every other play seems to be, it is a refreshing story that is very funny about getting older, being gay, being a woman. You can see the whole interview on my YouTube channel. On Thursday, I was back filming Holby City and bizarrely, Paul O'Grady showed up who was also filming his show for the love of dogs, which I might now be in as well. In the evening, I swung by Sing Easy at the Piano Works West End to catch up with Steph Parry, who was joined by Charlie McCulloch and Lois Morgan Gay, who I adore. They were treating the audience to a little rendition from Les Mis, as well as this from Waitress. club for Birdcage. This is a regular series hosted by Paul Branch which gives West End performers a platform to sing into the night. This was the first time I'd been to the show and Paul does an incredible job of hosting, mixing chat and music while he introduces each act. On Thursday they had a wicked takeover and we're joined by cast members from the show. Here are a few videos from the evening. To be kind and don't lose your mind Just remember that I'm your baby Take me for what I am Lose if you're there oh. It won't work, I look before I leave I love margin and discipline I make lists in my sleep, baby You want to Apollo 
Tori, and that's like way, 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 way. way. I was at the Old Vic to see Present Laughter. Now this is a brilliant production with Andrew Scott. Now if you don't know who Andrew Scott is, he is one of the best actors of his generation. He has done so much theatre, although most people will know him recently from his work as the hot vicar in Fleabag. Present Laughter is a Noel Coward play and it is hilarious. Honestly, you will adore this production. Like I say, Andrew Scott is incredible. As are the entire ensemble cast. I wouldn't be surprised if this production continues to sell out, but if you are lucky enough to get a ticket, make sure you do. Also on Friday, I had a friend visit from America. Now, being American, Cody wanted to see a play at The Globe. Now, The Globe have put together a group of eight actors called The Globe Players, and he went to watch them in The Comedy of Errors. Now, at midnight, they did a special midnight matinee, which was something that I wasn't even aware of. Basically, it was a special show that started at midnight on Friday evening, and it was an audience choice, with the audience being invited to vote for which of the three productions they wanted to see. The choices were Comedy of Errors, Pericles, and Twelfth Night with Twelfth Night winning. We then watched the show till 2.30 in the morning. And oh, wow, what a production. Between the eight players, they take on multiple roles each, and it is so cleverly done. They are brilliant. Each used their own regional accents, basic costumes and simple makeup, no sets, no lighting, no sound effects. It really stripped it back to focus on the text and the performance. And they were incredible. I've never seen Shakespeare done like this in its truest form. And I'll be honest, it reinvigorated my love of Shakespeare. If you haven't seen a Shakespeare production in the Globe, you definitely need to go and see it. And the unique experience of going to a midnight matinee is something you can't compare. Their next midnight matinee will be a Midsummer Night's Dream on the 20th of July. On Saturday, it was time for West End Live, the largest free event in Europe of this nature bringing together and presenting some of the best shows in the West End and some still to come. And I was there with my new microphone. Oh my God, I'm here at West End Live. It is amazing. It's such a gorgeous, sunny day. Um, the cast of Wicked have just performed here. And coming up next, oh, there's a dinosaur. Look, there's a dinosaur. I don't know what that is. Somebody walking with a dad. I was hoping to get an interview with a few more people, but there simply wasn't chance. I did manage to catch up with Matt Croker and the Ida Girls and spend a lot of time with my new blogger friends. Hi! Yes, good, thank you. How was that performing opening the show? It was amazing, it always is. Um, amazing and good fun, but then it's a bit emotional because it's our last one. I'm here at West End Live. With that stagey blog. Hi! Oh my god, to get a mic! This is fun. I'm just like holding it a little bit. That's really fun. Yeah, don't steal my mic. Okay, it's gorgeous though. I'm so excited to be here, yeah. Look at you. Hey. How are you? Uh, I am rather warm. I'm melting, honestly. I'm like the Wicked Witch of the West. I'm gonna turn into a rag because I'm boiling. Who wears the shirt? <laughs> I loved it. Can I 
What did you say about Simba? I was very fair. <laughs> Didn't you say you wouldn't push him off Pride Rock? I did say that, yes. But that is something I said. Yeah. I'm sounding dusty today. I, ooh, girl, I woke up and I just feel crusty. <laughs> well, you're looking all right. Well, I'll try my best. And we will live the years together. and they were unbelievable so good so yeah just amazing so intelligent they were just brilliant yeah, yeah. and how was performing yesterday it was so much fun yeah everyone is just so supportive in the audience honestly we had the best time from stagey fair Woo! i'm good thanks how are you how's the weekend been for you great i'm tired but i'm having a great time still <laughs> and you caught a bit of the sun uh i think so yeah it's warm isn't it Sweaty, so hot. guys, sweaty. Probably the hottest yet. So, who was your favourite of the whole weekend? So six, 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 six. I'm not going to stop saying six because we're just going to keep talking about six, aren't Divorced. We? Beheaded. Died. Divorced. Beheaded. Survived. Yes! was a gorgeous weekend and I even caught the sun. There were some incredible performances with Lucy Jones taking to the stage four times. If you were there you probably had your own highlight but for me it was seeing some of the new productions that were coming up including Aunt Juliet and The View Upstairs both of which were fantastic as well as Brooklyn the Musical which was only cast last week. And even so, the cast have come together and managed to put together two songs from the show. Now once upon a night I put together a little party with the help of my friends at Sing Easy at the Piano Works West End and welcomed a bunch of other bloggers to come together and meet and chat. It was a great evening and thank you to everybody at Sing Easy for having us. Especially Lois and Chrissy who sang this. <laughs> Bianca Del Rio, Miss Mop, and Vinegar Strokes from the hit musical Everybody's Talking About Jamie came together for a special cabaret in aid of diversity role models. They are a fantastic charity that's been running for nine years and managed to raise £3,000 on the evening. Joining Bianca was the original Jamie Campbell, Devolution, Courtney Bowman, and Faye Toza herself came along to sing a couple of songs and made one huge Steps fan a very lucky man when they asked him to join them on stage to sing a little encore. Sing, but I've been blind to many times before. Never seen it coming out in shadows and secrets.
it for this week. I am knackered. I'm going to go and have a lie down for the next two days. Look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>